Hello, I'm your host, Alex Freeberg, and this is The Alex the Analyst Show. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Today, we are comparing working at a startup versus working at a very large company like a Fortune 500 company or a FANG company. Uh, that was too much to write out in the title, so I'm just going to put something like startup versus Fortune 500 company. Keep it simple. Keep the people engaged. You know how I do it around here. Now, uh, something that I mentioned in the last video was that uh, the beautiful people at Patreon uh, who are supporting me, supporting the channel, supporting this uh, right here, what we are doing, uh, are going to be able to vote on some things for the show. I gave them some fantastic options, in my opinion. And what they voted on was that they wanted to see Max more. They said, where is he? We want to see him. So he's going to be in here. Uh, he's sitting right next to me doing ungodly things. Uh, I won't tell you what he's doing. But he will be joining us for some questions, maybe some Q&A, get his thoughts and opinions on this very subject. Very not not very knowledgeable, but very cute. So that is what was voted on. That is what we will do. Um, whether you like it or not, if you're not a dog person, that's all right. Just ignore them. That's okay. We'll get through it together. Um, I have worked at both a startup and I worked and currently work at a Fortune 500 company. So I feel like I have a pretty good idea uh, of, of the differences between these two. And I have pros and cons for both. And uh, it, to me, is a very, very crucial thing that you should definitely think about before you get a job. Absolutely, extremely important. I had no idea. I didn't know this when I was starting out. I just took whatever job they gave me. If I had started out at some Fortune 500 company, uh, you know, I wouldn't uh, know half as much as I do now. So, um, you know, I'm glad I got experience in both, really. And hopefully, it'll help guide you a little bit into what fits better for you. There are certain people who fit in one category or the other. Um, I personally fit more in the Fortune 500 ca category because um, money's important to me right now because I have a family. So where I am right now, I'm, I'm at a good place. Um, but maybe five years ago, that wouldn't have been the best place for me. So I'm going to go into some of the differences, some of the things I do like, some of the things I don't like about both, and just kind of um, you know randomly talking about both, to be honest. Um, the very first thing that I want to talk about is kind of the work that you're going to be doing at both companies, because that's the probably the biggest thing that's going to, you know, make you want to go one way or the other. It's the type of work. I will say that at a startup, at a small company, you know, your title might be data analyst, but you are not just doing data analyst work. That is just m the vast majority of the time. That's how it is because they are understaffed. And they need you to pick up random stuff. You know, today you're going to start doing, you know, user interface stuff for our this new uh, thing we're creating, uh, this new product. You know, you may not know how to do it, but we're going to teach you how to do it. We need somebody who can QA this and look through it. Um, and that happens oft often. Like I did that when we were, when I was at this startup, uh, we were building out this new product and they were like, hey, Alex, how does this look? Do some testing on it. Find some bugs. And so I would actually walk through the product. Uh, I would fix bug or find bugs. I would show the team. They would fix it. I'd try it again. And I was doing like QA work. Um, wasn't part of my job description really. But I did it because, uh, you know, they needed me to. We didn't have anyone else to do it. That's that, that sometimes is how it goes. You just wear a lot of hats. Um, although my job was very customer focused, I worked a lot with our clients. Uh, I worked a lot with... Um, the actual analysis of the data, getting the data in, working with our programmers to do all that work. Uh, that is a lot of the work I did, but I will say that I still did a ton of just random stuff that I probably, at a, at a larger company, I would not have to do. There's somebody else who has that job title who, who literally that's their job. Um, and, and that's true. Because where I work now, we have QA testers, we have a whole QA team. There's like four of them who QA all of our work, all of our data dictionaries, all of our, our, our data mapping, um, our scripts, like all this stuff. They just QA anything we need. And it's amazing. I mean, they are fantastic at finding all my errors. And so, you know, they they have two or three assigned just to me. So, I mean, it is it is just a whole other world of, uh, of the type of work that you're going to be doing. So I will say that at a small company, just as a generalization, not all the time, you're going to wear many hats. You're going to work with a lot of things, work on a lot of things that you typically would not work at 
work on as a data analyst. At the large company, you are typically, very broad generalization, narrowed in on what you were doing in your, in your role, in your job. So for example, I used to, at my small company, do a lot of different things. When I got to the large company that I work at now, I am very narrow focused in what I do. I work in the ETL process. Um, and I have become excellent at it because that is all I do. Every single day, work in the ETL process um, with programmers and architects and all these things. But I have a very narrow focus on the type of work that I do. Um, and nobody else does the work that I do. I am the one who does it. And so I am known as the guy who does that specific type of work. Whereas at the small company, I just, whatever anybody needed me to do, sure, why not? As long as it's kind of relevant, um, kind of something that they thought I could do, I, I'd do it. Um, one second, I'm just going to check this out real quick. Cool. Um, one second, I'm going to grab Max. Good. Yeah. Um, the next thing is, is that the people who you're going to work with, uh, you, you don't get to work with Max much, unfortunately. He stays at home. But the people at a small company that you're going to work with, I worked with anyone from like IT support. Um, for whatever reason, I worked with them a lot. I don't remember why, to be honest, um, but I did. I worked with IT support a lot. I worked with our directors a lot, um, our programming team a lot. And I sometimes even got on calls and meetings with like the CEO, the COO. Um, and so I literally worked with every single, almost every single person in the company besides HR, really. So, you know, it's just a different feeling of working at a small company under like 50 people-ish because you kind of know everybody. Everybody knows you. All right, buddy. Okay. Whoa. Hey, whoa, calm down. Did not want to uh, be in the show at the moment, but you work with literally anybody. Um, and it was so funny cause I would, I would go home to my wife and she's like, Oh, what you do? I was like, I was working with the, with the CEO, you know, I'd say his name, but I was working with the CEO, CEO today on, on something. And she was like, she's like, why, why did they, why you're like, you've been there for like six months. And I'm like, I don't know. They wanted my opinion. They wanted my thoughts on something uh, that never, that I'm not going to say it never happens. Well, actually, no, it never happens. I've never worked with the CEO at my company. <laughs> um, I've worked with higher ups. Um, but that, that's kind of a unique thing in the position that I'm in. But I've never worked with our CEO, COO. Um, you know, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen at my level at my company that I currently work for. It's just very, very different. Um, and so you get to work with a lot of different positions. You can kind of understand the things that you like that you don't like about each position. Um, you can, you know, I think what I liked about working at the small company is I kind of could under, I got to understand the business model a lot more. I got to really understand how we generate revenue, what products generate revenue, what things to focus on, what things not to focus on. Cause I was literally, I could talk to him as he passed by in the hall. I'd be like, Hey, why are we working on this project? Uh, what, you know, what, what's the importance of this project? And he would just tell me this, 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 um, where at my company, I don't get that high level view. Sometimes, sometimes I just got to do the work cause they told me to do the work. Um, which, it kind of sucks sometimes because I really like understanding the background of it. And I'm, I, and I like asking a lot of questions sometimes for certain projects. I'm like, Hey, why are we doing this? Why does this happen? Um, and, and sometimes they're just like, Hey, you know, it's the high level. Here's what it is, but it's not specific. I didn't really learn anything. Um, it can be frustrating. Um, so that's another, that's a, another difference between small company, big company. Um, one thing that I very much liked at a small company is um, I, I had to learn everything very quickly. Um, you kind of get tossed into it at a small company. I personally did not have a big onboarding process. They, they kind of brought me on and were just like, hey, let's, let's get to work. Here's some analysis we need done. Here's some Excel. Here's our databases. Let's do a quick run through of everything that we have. Come to me when you have questions. Um, and of course I had a million questions because I probably needed a lot more training than that. That was my first really real data analyst job. Sorry, I keep uh, just kind of checking the time here. Um, and so I really, really enjoyed just being tossed in there, had, having to figure it out because honestly, I learned so quickly. I feel like I, well, I, I was up and running within a month, um, on everything, 
there was a, occasionally when I had to go ask for certain things, why is it set up this way? Why is it set up that way? Why do we have this product? And that happens even now when you've been in a company for a year, year and a half. It's going to happen, but I felt like I was very comfortable right away. At the large company, they their onboarding process was like two weeks. Um, then the work was very, very introductory, like, all right, today's task is to do this. Just this one or two things. A very simple, very easy, super beginner. Um, it, maybe not that easy. Maybe I'm exaggerating that a bit. But it was nothing compared to when I started at the, 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 small, the startup company. It was tossed in, head first, deep end. Here's work. Let's go. We need this done. We're paying you. You know, we're paying you to work. We're at the large company. It was like, all right, we're paying you because we want you to really learn this stuff, to really get a hold on what we're trying to do here. Um, the data, the databases, here's training manuals, here's HIPAA compliance, here's all these things. And then in, you know, two, three, four weeks, we'll get you going. We'll get you some stuff. We'll get you access to everything. It really, that really is how it is. It was very different. I feel like I learned a lot more at the beginning of the, of the startup job because one, I was just, I was learning so many things. Like here are some of the things that I was working on. I did QA, like I was saying before, um, on user interface. I also did QA on things like store procedures, jobs, um, even store procedures and jobs of like our clients. Our clients would send us stuff and these huge, massive store procedures that did all these crazy things. Um, and they were like, all right, Alex, they're, they don't know why this is working for them. Go figure it out. And I was just dropped into the deep end and I was like, I have no idea what I'm doing. I asked a lot of questions, a lot of stack overflow, a lot of stack overflow. And eventually I figured it out and I learned so, so much. Um, and it was just a phenomenal, phenomenal job to start out at it, honestly. Um, but it, it, completely random stuff, right? I also worked, um, I did data analysis, learned a lot of SQL right away. We used SQL Server, learned a ton of SQL Server. Um, we used Tableau for our visualization. So I actually got a lot of hands-on with Tableau. Um, we had a lot of proprietary products. So I under, I started to understand how we de were developing products. So on the product side, I started to learn all these testing methods, um, how we actually developed and created the products uh, to fit the business needs, um, how we actually sold the products, um, what, what, what features were important to sell products, um, how to market our products to our customers better, how to upsell our, like a lot of the um, marketing stuff I, I started to learn because they wanted me to start doing some of that. Like when you're talking with a client, recommend some of our products. So I was almost a salesman at some point. Um, so I was learning sales techniques and stuff like that. I mean, just like stuff that most data analysts are not doing. But I, but then I got to put on my resume that I generated revenue because I got some people to sign up for things that maybe they weren't going to sign up for um, in the beginning. So I learned an absolute ton, right? It was amazing. It was, fa it was fantastic. I, I, I'm very grateful that I had that. The role that I'm currently in, I learned, and, and going back to actually real quick, going back to the startup, I didn't learn everything super in depth right? Uh, for SQL, I learned way more than I think I needed to. I was probably, I, I feel like when I left that job, I was more programmer level than I was data analyst level for SQL, just because they were throwing so much advanced stuff at me. I had to, I had to be able to do that because they wanted me or needed me to do that. Um, and I was not at a place to say no. So I had to do it. I had to learn it. So I was learning things that are way above what I would consider normal for a data analyst to learn. Some things I did not learn super in depth. Um, I didn't learn. Um, I didn't learn the sales part of it super in depth. I didn't learn the UI stuff. All those like little things that they wanted me to do. The Q, well, the QA I kind of learned a little bit in depth. Um, they had some Python, but not a lot, so I didn't learn Python in depth. Um, that was really in my current job. I used Python, so it was it was hit or miss between learning it in depth and not learning it in depth. Uh, and, and, and I just got, ex I got a lot of experiences in the, in the job that I'm in now, we went, we, I, I've gone so in depth, so drilling down to the next layer, the next layer, the next layer, the next layer. Now I understand like how things are stored, like why they're stored certain ways, why cloud platforms are, are do the things that they do with the different things in cloud platforms. Um, I'm learning a lot more of almost the DBA ETL, side of things with um, 
within my job because I have to, you know, we have to have storage. Storage is very important. So understanding the storage and how that flows and how to, who to contact, what they do, those things I actually need to know now. And so now that I've just done it so often, so many times, so repetitively, I'm starting to really understand everything in depth, like super in depth, um, which I love. I love going in depth. I love knowing the nitty gritty of why, how, what, when, why, all those questions. Um, and and so those that is a big, big, big difference between the two. Let me get Max again. Oh. He, let me tell you something about this dog before I get into it. This dog is the friendliest dog you've ever met in your life. So calm, so gentle. But with my daughter, my oldest daughter, who's eight years old, he goes nuts for anybody else, even a, even strangers. He's just super friendly, super calm. But for whatever reason, my daughter gets him amped like nobody's business. And he will just like growl and bark and, and chase her around the house. It's insane. Great dog, though. Uh, good family dog. He is a, if, if I have not told you, um, Max is a doxy poo. If you've ever heard of that, Max, come on, buddy. It's for the show. Just stay with me. It's half dachshund, half poodle. Never heard of it in my life. Some fancy thing that my wife had heard of that she really liked and we got it. Um, but anyways, enough about Max. Um, the next thing I wanted to talk about is some of the benefits um, I guess some of the cons, pros and cons of like salary uh, and, 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 and between the two. So for salary, you're, you are obviously going to get paid less when you work at a startup, right? They have small, they have, they have probably have like, I don't know, I'm doing a really bad job at explaining what's going on in my head. But I will say that you're probably expecting 20 to 30% less pay, maybe even more at a startup. Startups just typically don't have the capability to bring someone in and pay them a, an extremely competitive salary. Sometimes they do, maybe in like Silicon Valley, um, big tech areas. All right, but all right, all right, I got you. Big tech companies uh, or, or, or big tech areas like Silicon Valley, some startups have the ability to pay, pay well. For the most part, though, they won't. Um, I was making 62000 at the startup where I'm making ninety two now um, after... A promotion. And so, you know, it's a big difference in terms of, of pay. And the insurance is typically not, uh, you know, th these things are probably not things that you think about, or maybe not as important to you. But I promise you, they will be important one day. If you are not currently employed, and you don't understand this stuff, or you don't know about this stuff, or have not thought about this stuff, this may sound very boring to you. But as a family man, as somebody who is now uh, taking care of of many children and a wife, uh, these things are are not only important; they are critical. Um, and it was a huge factor in terms of kind of where I was looking to get a job. At my startup job, the health insurance was very bad, and it was very expensive. I'm talking like I don't I do not understand how I was paying so much for insurance. And I still didn't have the best tier. Like I was taking like the second or third tier down and I was still paying a crazy amount of money. And then my deductible was high. My, uh, my out of pocket was high. It was a terrible plan. Uh, it paid okay at the time. I was like, I was really happy with the pay. Um, but man, it was so expensive. They had no 401k match. Um, they didn't have any like tuition reimbursement or, um, Let's see. They didn't. They didn't have an official bonus program. For I got a bonus the very first year I was there. I got a bonus for five hundred dollars. And actually, let me tell you something. I was extremely ecstatic about that five hundred dollars. I am not going to lie to you. I went home to my wife and I was. It was a. It was a check. the The CEO had come come around to my desk, wrote me a check for five hundred dollars, and handed it to me. And I was so happy. I was like, Oh my gosh! I was like, I've never got a bonus before. This is amazing. Thank you. It's like, I was so happy. So I went home to my wife and I'm like holding it up. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, smacking. And I'm like, I'm like this bad boy, I got $500. It's like, what are we, we going to do? What are we going to buy? I was like, we, we can do anything. I was actually really, really happy about that because I'd never gotten a bonus before. Um, at my company that I'm at now, 
Health insurance is more than decent. At I have the top tier health insurance at half the cost of what I was paying at the other place. My deductible is literally a third of what it was. I'm paying half. That's how large companies, they really can. They reeled me in with that. I was sold. I had no idea how expensive I was paying in health insurance until I got this job. I'll never go back to a crappy health insurance plan. It saved, it saved me so much money, honestly. Um, they have a 401k match. They have a stock purchasing program where you can buy your own company's stock at a discount, uh, which is really cool. Never heard of that before. Big company life. Um, they also do tuition reimbursement. They have so many benefits, so many benefits of working at a large company uh, that you just cannot get or won't get at a small company or a startup company. So that is very nice. Very, very nice. Uh, highly recommend if you're if you're if you care about money, if you want money. Uh, a large company will provide that. A lot, a lot of uh, nice benefits there. Something else that is a was a very big negative for me that actually made me want to switch jobs while I was in my job was this the feeling of security, the feeling like that job is going to last a long time. At the startup, never heard of that company before I got in there. D- you know, didn't know what they did before I got in there. They just it just was not a very secure job, right? It, I felt like at any moment. At any day, they could come in and be like, you know, we lost, our, we lost our biggest client. We no longer can afford you, or we lost, you know, we we lost our business. We're going out of business. We're we're bankrupt, etc. I genuinely had that feeling all the time, and it was very anxiety provoking. Uh, I'd go home to my wife. I was like, man, I got to look for another job. I didn't for a while. Eventually, I did. But I was like, I got to look for another job. She's like, don't you love your job? I was like, I love my job. I love my coworkers. I love the people I'm working with. I like the work I do. All these things. I really, really liked working there. But in the end, I did not see a long-term future there, um, which ended up making me want to leave, right? And that was a huge deal for me, a huge deal breaker. I could not, I could not afford to lose my job with my family and, and being the, the breadwinner of the family. I just couldn't afford it. And so that was a big, big deal breaker. At the job I'm at now, I feel very comfortable. I feel very secure. Uh, I definitely feel like um, I definitely feel like if something were to happen to the company, I still have a very good shot at keeping my job. Um, I've tried to tra- position myself a, 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 as an important piece in, in the cog uh, that keeps the wheels moving. Um, it doesn't always happen, but I mean, I just feel a lot more secure. Much better sense of security and feeling like I can move up in the ranks, that I can stay there long term. It's important to me. And it, I hope it's important to you. Um, maybe it's not, maybe, or, you know, maybe you're just doing contract work. Definitely possible. I'm just saying for me personally, that was a big, 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 uh, thing that I was looking for and something that I got in my current job that I did not have before that definitely scared me. I was, I was very, um, anxious. It was, it was something that was very much stressing me out for quite a while. Um, I think that is that is most of the big things I wanted to hit. Now, at the very end, right now, I just want to summarize what which one might be good for you, right? Because that's good to know. I highly recommend at some point, especially early on in your career, working at a startup. Um, I I know I talked about a lot of um, about a lot of negatives, and I and you know that's just kind of how it flowed. Let me tell you something about the startup. I learned so much so quickly. I, I, I made what I would consider lifelong coworker friends that I stum- some I still talk to even today. Uh, like just a couple of days ago, I was talking to one. Um, I learned so much. I gained such incredible experience that I got to put on my resume, talk about the things, the impact that I had. Highly, highly, highly recommend working at the startup at some point especially early on in your career when it doesn't matter as much. Um, you know, I say that I t- say that with a grain of salt, but it doesn't matter as much if if something happens, if the the business goes under. You can you're you, you're able to take more risks. The younger you are, that you're able to take more risks. It's just it's it's true. So, I highly recommend it for people who are right out of college, for people who are um not exactly sure exactly what they want to do. Uh cuz 
Like if you go to a big company, you're pigeonholed. Not pigeonholed always, forever, but you have a very narrow focus of what you're going to do. So you don't get the full picture of how everything works, the in-depths of everything. Um, so j- just important to think about. Uh, people who want to go to a large company, I uh, people who need really good pay right away, really good health insurance, have families. Uh, if you're single, pff, startup might be the way to go because you're single. You can do what you want. You can just take care of yourself. Uh, you know, take some risks, do your thing. But if you got a family, if you're like me, it might be a really good idea to go to something a little bit more stable. If you want to go back to school, if you want to go get like a master's degree, go to a big, you can go to a big company, get it paid for. It's amazing. Um, real quick, we don't have much time left. Or I don't want to go too, too much longer, to be honest. I just don't want to, I just don't want to keep rambling on forever. Uh, let's go to our question of the week. A fantastic time. A fantastic time in our show, which I love. I like answering your questions, which is from Sessi. I'm going to say it's Sessi. We're going to go with that. It says, do you like your job? Is it stressful? Is it boring? Would you recommend it? I'm going to answer this quickly. I could I could take a long time to answer it. I'm not going to do that. Really quickly, do I like my job? I love my job. Just data analysis at, in general is just extremely fun. I love the work. Obviously, I like it so much I made a channel about it. So yeah, I like I like my job. I love the people I work with. They are phenomenal. They're funny. They are hard workers. They're extremely intelligent. They challenge me in a lot of ways. Um, so yes, love my job. Is it stressful? No and yes. Sometimes there is no stress at all. It's a look. Buddy, come on, man. All right. Go lay back down. He Look, I tried. He, he didn't want to cooperate today. Sometimes he'll sit on my lap for hours. Not today. Uh, is it stressful? There was some, like this past week, it was um, the end of a quarter, uh, end of our fiscal year, honestly. So we're, actually, so we were uh, we're starting a new fiscal year. So there's so much planning, so much work to be done to finish before the end of the fiscal year. So yes, yeah, so it was a little bit stressful the past two weeks. But before that, no, not super stressful. Uh, is it boring? Yes and no. Sometimes it's very boring. Sometimes I have like 10 emails out waiting for things back and I'm just sitting here. I'm just like, come on. I'm like, what do I do? What am I supposed to be doing? I'm talking to my boss. I'm like, look, I got all, I can show you all the emails. And I show her all that. And then she's like, yeah, I, not much for you to do right now. I'm like, I know. So you can get a little boring sometimes. Would I recommend it? Of course. Of course I recommend it. Again, I made this channel because I highly recommend you becoming a data analyst if that is something that you're interested in, if you have a passion for details and, and, and problem solving, highly recommend it. Uh, we are now at my favorite time of the show where the people who are watching this entire thing have watched me just ramble on, on a rant, again, about nonsense. And you made it to the end. You push through because you want to become a better data analyst. You want to be the best that you can be. And you're doing that because you know that this is the best channel out there for data analytics. And you're not going to find quality content like Max anywhere else. Uh, And so before I go into the last part, I want to say, if you want to support me, go to Patreon, support the channel. You guys are amazing. That's my little plug for the day. The keyword of the day, I know you've been waiting for it, is broccoli. No other reason than the fact that my son just learned the word broccoli. He's been saying it about everything green. Even if it was a kiwi, he kept saying broccoli. And it was super cute. So that's our word of the day. If you watch the entire video, put broccoli in the chat. I'll meet you there, my broccoli crew. Thank you for watching. I I just say nonsense. At the end, at the end, I just kind of say nonsense. Uh, thank you for watching. You guys are amazing. Thank you for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next one. I'll see you next week. Goodbye.